G'day and welcome back. Today I thought I'd have a look at this Eris brand radio. It was made in Holland or the Netherlands. I think it was made in about 1948. I haven't heard of Eris before, but a friend of mine this week announced that he'd found uh, an Eris radio, so I thought oh, I'll get mine out and we'll see if I can repair this one. The case is made of wood and it's one of the most unattractive radios I've ever seen. Hmm, maybe not. But still worth preserving, it's part of our history. On the side here is the tone switch. This is the volume, that'll be tuning. And there's the wave change switch on the other side here. Now you're probably thinking, where's the dial? Oh, there it is there. It's a pop-up dial. Uh, it's got most of the European stations on it. The little circle with a pointer in it uh, represents the various tone settings. So by speaker, I, I don't know, language, oh gosh, normal. Oh, gee, I don't know what that means. And this has got the three bands on it. It says band spread down the bottom there. Ah, interesting. The dial string's still working. That's good. I'll spin this around and we'll have a look at the back. Here's the back of it, and they look like locked or valves, which will give trouble for sure. It seems to have a three-gang tuner, which will mean it's got an RF stage. It's only got three valves, like working valves. The other one's a rectifier. Look, there's only one IF transformer. It's only got one stage of IF. Yeah, I don't know. Lots of these little things. I assume they're coils of some sort. Audio transformer and, of course, the main transformer. Really big speaker at the back there. It has a 245 volt selection, which is good for Australia. There's a little data plate. It says uh, KY487 for the model number. Oh, I can't quite read that for the serial number. It doesn't seem very high. Uh, 50 hertz frequency and uh, nothing else there is there 40 watts i think that says the little logo there's got a v a d and an h and that stands for vanderheim it hasn't got a plug on it but look at it now it's just got the lead there so the plug's been removed the wire is still good the wire is really good hmm, very good now as usual i'm going to plug it in on the dim bulb and see what happens i fitted a plug to the line and i'm being optimistic i've also put an antenna on I'm on dim bulb, I'll put some power on and see what we get. 24 watts, 31 watts, that doesn't look too bad. The bulb came on for a second, it's gone off again. I can see a filament glowing in there, it should have warmed up. I'll tune it. There's nothing there. The rectifier is warm. There's nothing, nothing happening. Hmm, okay. I'll remove the chassis so I can see what's going on. To get the chassis out, I've got to take these knobs off the side and if they pull off, yep. Looks like to release the dial itself, the indicator, there's a little screw down here and we'll let the little wire go. Yeah, there we go. This is the shaft for the wave switch and it's got a little bracket on there. I guess the volume knob just pulls off. And same with the tuning knob. Yeah. I've got it on its back and it has the four securing screws as it always does. It doesn't have a cover on this access here. I, I, that's a bit unusual. Anyway, let me get these out and I'll come back when I've got the chassis out. I've removed the chassis. I had to remove the speaker wires and I had to unscrew the magic eye. This is a neat looking chassis. It looks like it's well made. I'll have a look in the bottom. Underneath is very neatly laid out. It has these black molded caps, and I think these were a Phillips cap. I don't know for sure, but they sure showed up in a lot of Phillips sets. And these are a Phillips type trimmer as well, so there's probably a lot of Phillips gear in here, I guess. To start with, I'll do some voltage tests. I'll be able to measure the B plus here. This is it coming out here, I'm pretty sure. I'll measure it there. I'll put some power on. And I can hear a hum. So the output transformer is working. I'll put my meter to ground here, the chassis. If I touch here, this should give us some reading. Here, 280, what's that, 5. So it's just settling down. So B plus is there. I'm, I'm tuning that where a station should be, and there's nothing. So nothing's getting through. I'll have to turn it over and do some more tests. I've flipped it over. I've got power on it. It has been warming up for about 30 seconds. Uh, now, this is the bottom of the output valve, and I... I think that's the plate and I've got 285 this one here is the 
screen grid, I think. I can't remember. It's one way or the other. And that's two. So the, there's power there. This is the grid. This is the coupling capacitor. What have I got there? 2.6. Uh, that must be... That's leaking a bit, I assume. I have tacked a little 0.01 capacitor in there for the coupling capacitor. And I'll see what voltage we've got now. It's not making any noise. So we're down to zero. So it had positive voltage on there. Yeah. So it's not making any noise. I would think that valve is cooked. So I'll just make sure it's got filament voltage on. Uh, should be that one. Should have about six volts. Yeah. So it's got filament voltage. That should be zero. There's the output valve. Uh, there's the locator. And these two should be the filaments. So Let's see what we get. Yeah, it's got continuity. It doesn't seem to be getting warm at all. The radio is powered again, and there's the notch there. So let's see if we've got it here. We've got six volts. I'll plug the valve in and see if I can see it glowing. I can see it glowing there now, and there's noise from the speaker. Maybe that socket needs to be cleaned properly. I've attached the other end of this clip to the grid of this valve and I'm now getting a bit of a buzz through. It's not very loud. And now that's getting hot. That is very hot. That's heating the dust hot. Yeah, okay, so that wasn't working before. What about this one? Oh, look at that. What about this one? <laughs> I know what to do now. I'm going to take all these valves out and clean the bases up. I've cleaned the valve bases there and... Oh gosh, it's not making much noise. There's some noise getting through. So they don't crackle anymore, <laughs> but it still doesn't work. The filament's on in there, I can see that. I've connected my signal generator and I've put the knob on the band switch. I'll see if I can blast the signal through. Oh, that should be normal there. Uh, might be a dicky switch, eh? I'll give that switch a clean. That might get us going. I just went to turn the radio off and the sound started to come up. And in fact, it's so loud I had to turn it all the way down. So it's this switch. Ah, now I've broken it. <laughs> so it's something in that switch. There's one of the switch plates there. And it's covered in this brown gunk. I don't know what it is. If someone's tried to lubricate it with this stuff and it's turned to that, I don't know. I'll try a bit of service oil, see if it melts it. Yeah, it's turning it. Yeah, it's coming off. I'll just keep flushing it with service oil. And I've got a toothbrush here. I might have to cut this down and see if I can remove that, whatever it is, and clean this up. So leave it with me. I'll come back in an hour or so when I've finished this and hopefully it'll be all clean. I've cleaned this up as best as I can while the switch is in situ. It looks pretty good. Cool, blimey, look at the white toothbrush. I'll flip it over, we'll try it out again. Right, it's on and it's turned up. I've actually got it on full power. I can just hear it. I can just hear it. And this switch is fine now. The valves seem to work to some degree, so I would think I need to change the capacitors in it. Get that out of the way, then I can work on any other problems it's got. I'll change all the capacitors, I'll come back then, we'll try it out again. <coughs> Yikes! I've completed replacing the capacitors. There's two layers here, so I had to lift this top layer off to get to the bottom layer. It was pretty difficult, but uh, yeah, I got through. It probably took about four or five hours to do them. These red capacitors, I get them from the local electronic shop. I've run out of some of Carl's capacitors, so I've got to restock shortly. I would much prefer to use his black capacitors. There's a link to Carl's store in the description below this video. Uh, there was a couple down the end here that were a bit hard to get to. I had to destroy the capacitor to get it out. Here's the casualty list, and this is the one I broke to get it out of that end position. Uh, this one just fell apart, and I'll show you what they look like. 
This one broke while I was trying to get it out and you can see here it's just a paper capacitor. This is plastic, it does melt. If I get the soldering iron near it, it'll melt. So there's the paper capacitor. So I guess if it is a bit cracked, it might still work as long as the moisture hasn't got inside it. This is how the capacitors are marked. They're 4K7P. The P is picofarad and that's 4.7K picofarad. So that's 0 0.0047 microfarad. I've left the dual main filter cap connected still. There was not a lot of hum and I'll just leave it there for a minute till I work out what I'm going to do with it. In the tube here is the bypass capacitor and it's an electrolytic. I didn't know what to do with it. I've secreted a little one in there to replace it and I've disconnected this end of it. The other end's still connected. It looks like it's still there and you can barely see this one that's hidden under the wire. So I thought that was better than opening that and exposing the chemicals. So I'll just leave it as it is. As usual, when I changed the capacitors, I also went along and checked the resistors as I went, and they're all okay. They're mostly high, but I don't think they're be able to, certainly not 20%. Uh, they may well be over 10%, but that's okay. It won't make any difference to the radio. The radio won't be affected by it. I think this resistor here was one of the higher ones. I'll check it. I'll see what percentage above specification it is. This is the one I think is out. It says 1M3, so it's 1.3 meg. Uh, I've got a meter connected down the bottom there, so I can just check this side here. That's oh, 1.3. Oh, so that's, that one's okay. Uh, that's not the one that was crooked then. I'll find the one that I thought was a bit high, and we'll work out what it is. It was this one here that was reading high. This is M56, so that's 560K. If I measure that there, it's coming up at 632. So very simply, it should be 560,000. We've got 630,000. We don't need to worry about those. So 63 minus 56 is uh, 7, so all we need to know is a 7. So it's 7 divided by the original 56, multiply that by 100, and it equals 12.5%. So that's the rise above the original specification. I'm happy with 10%, I'm happy with 20, I like to go somewhere near 10, this is good enough, I'm not replacing any of those resistors. So now that that's all done, I'm going to turn it over and we'll see if it works. I have it all set up. I've got an antenna on it and the speakers. Uh, it's on dim bulb. 20. That's pulling a lot less watts than it used to. Can't hear anything. Or it should have warmed up by now, but I'm not. I'm getting some noise from the volume. Something's getting through. Try this again. Oh, there it is. This is ABC Radio Brisbane, Queensland, with Cat Feeney. G'day. It's, uh, look, it's about half past one and I am preparing myself for what I expect to be a bit of a, um... Uh, I notice this volume control is very ordinary. So that needs to be looked at. I think someone's already been in that once before. But it is working, which is good news. Yeah, so I'll turn it up a bit and tune through the stations I'm going to spend too much time on this oh, I'm going the wrong way Taking you through the big sounds, news. sounds good In Hobart, Caleb Jewell make Wow Make particles from even individual photons of light It's working really well Ooh, Music Oops, losing my string. All right, well, it might work better than that. It's actually still on dim bulb. Let's go to full power. There's a music station. There's the racing station. So write your own ticket if you don't like this. Not sure what that is. That might be ABC News or it could be... For 4BH? No, not 4BH, I can't remember. 4BC. Instantaneously and automatically. Yeah, I'll turn it off. I'm happy with that. I wasn't 100% sure it was going to work. Um, I need to repair this valve. I have to work out what to do with this capacitor here. And I'll have a look at the spring on this string as well. I'll do those few things now, but I was pretty confident the problem was a capacitor. By the way, it was just um, 
intermittently coming on and then going off again. So that sounded like a capacitor to me. So I'm glad that's all done. I have the rectifier valve here and the base is very loose. I want to repair it. I've put some masking tape around the join there or between the glass envelope and the base. I've just put some little marks there to show where it was aligned. I'm going to unsolder the ends, take the base off, clean it out and put some more adhesive in and resolder these terminals. So I'm going to try and use my solder sucker gun and see if that'll work. I'm not sure it will. Oh, did alright. That one hasn't really come out. I'll, I'll get two soldering irons on it. Right, I've got two soldering irons on there now. We'll see if that works. Whoops. I think that one's worked. That one's worked. And that one's worked too. Good. So with a bit of luck, I think this will come off. There it is. I'll clean this old adhesive off, clean the glass up. I'll put it together with some JB Weld and just re-solder the base. It should be as good as new. I've cleaned up inside the base. I've cleaned the glass. I've soldered some very fine wire onto the filament wires here. I need them to pull them through to line up with the holes in the base. You just can't do it without some sort of guide. So it's a matter of just pulling these up and the wires will find their way through. I also drilled out the holes with a drill, opened it back to their original size and got rid of any solder that was in there. Now I've got the wires all lined up, they're ready to pull through and I've just pulled this uh, base and the glass back so I can get some adhesive in there. So I have got them successfully into the holes. I'm using JB Weld. So I should be able to just pull the wires back through again. There it is. And the valve sitting down. I've got it all over my finger. Yeah, so there it is. All I have to do is pull these wires all the way through and just solder them back on again. There's the last one through. So they're all through. I'll smooth this adhesive off. I'll let the JB Weld set overnight. In the morning I'll take the tape off and re-solder these pins and this will be as good as new. Another thing I needed to tackle was this string up here. It's very loose. I think the problem is this spring has stretched. Now I do have another one here. Maybe I should cut it and make a new loop. The string is running around this pulley here. I'll put some tape on it and that should hold it all together. I can remove this off the end pulley there. I shortened the spring and made a new loop on the end. So I'll just try and thread this fine wire through my spring. There's one done. I'll do the other end. This is the end I cut, so not quite as easy as the other end. There it is. Stretch it over the pulley. It's a bit tighter now. And take the tape off there. Just check it there. There, that's working good, and it's nice and tight. That string looks a bit like Grandma's washing line there. Another thing I need to do is this volume control, but I also want to look at this capacitor here, this smoothing cap. It's got 250 microfarad capacitors in one can. It's not humming. The radio doesn't make any humming noise. I'm going to test this and just see if it's any good. So I'll unsolder those and we'll test it. My friend Peter very kindly sent this to me. It's a capacitor leakage tester. It doesn't check the capacitance. It does check the leakage under voltage. So you apply a voltage here and it gives you the leakage over here. All these electrolytic capacitors will leak a little bit and I'm not sure what it is. So what I'm going to do is measure a good capacitor. I'll see what it is and then I can compare it to the one in the radio. So I've got all the buttons set. I'll push this one. This applies power to the capacitor there and then wind the voltage up. And this one's rated at 450 so I'll put about 450 on it. And We'll read this. I'll let it settle down. We'll see what we get. 
that's settled down. Uh, we've got 450 there and it's reading 0.38. Let's call it 0.4. I'll compare that to the one that's in the radio. That should give us a good starting point. I'll connect the tester to the capacitor. All right, we'll test that one. And this is rated at 350 volts. Oh, <laughs> that's much, much bigger. Um, I'll let it settle again. Maybe that'll drop down. All right, it's been a few minutes now. It's on 351. It has dropped down and it still is dropping, but 3 milliamps, nearly 4 milliamps. I think I'll just restuff it. It's not worth taking the chance. It gives you peace of mind. So I'm going to call that a fail. I'll take the capacitor out to the workshop. I'm out in the workshop. I have the capacitor here. The first thing I've got to do is grind off this edge here. So I'll do that on my little sanding wheel. I've ground that off and I think it's starting to come. I'll try and open it like a can of sardines. I've put the nut on. I'll see if it'll come out. Okay. I think it's coming. There it goes. Okay. I'll see if I can get my pliers in here and oh look it's all coming in. Oh, easy. That's still pretty wet, so yeah, it probably had some life in it. I did measure the capacitance of these and they were down to about 30 uh, microfarad. Now I don't know what the original capacitance was because there's a pretty wide tolerance on these. That was pretty easy. I'll clean that can out. And I think this will have a packing on it. Uh, that's a rubber stopper on the top. Right, I'll have to go and clean both of these up thoroughly. I'll go and have a good wash too. You don't know what these chemicals have got in them. So I'll go and wash up, clean everything up. These are the 247 microfarads I was going to fit. They only just fit in the cans, really tight. I have some 33s here and I've just temporarily coupled the 33s in first and there's no hum. I put the 47s in there and there's no hum either. So I'm going to fit the 33s. They should do the job perfectly. I've cleaned the capacitor can out. I've also cleaned the little top here. I've drilled some holes in there so I can pick up the terminals again. I've also printed out a little holder for the capacitor. Now this can has a significant lip in here and if I made this small enough to get past the lip it would rattle around inside. So I've put a slot in there and if I take the capacitor out the slot will close up. I can put it in and when I put the capacitor back it'll open the slot up again and be reasonably tight inside the can. I've put some wires on this capacitor and I put a bit of that high temperature press board in there so that'll act as a spacer and just keep this away from the bottom. So if I push this together it should go in okay. and then pop open. Just have to line it up down the bottom there. The capacitor is in there. So um, I have another bit of press board. I'm going to put that in first. Then I'll put the next um, spacer in and then I can wire it all together. So I'll do all that. I'll come back when it's almost finished. I have the two capacitors in there now. The grey wire is the negative and these two are the positive. They're going to fit through some holes in here and here and they'll come out next to the terminals here. I'm going to go and fit this in but I need to put some adhesive in here because you need to hang onto the can while you do the nut up. So I'll glue it in so that it won't rotate and shear off my wires. I've put some JB Weld in there, just some little blobs of it and I've got the wires through so hopefully I can get this in here and I'll go outside and I'll re-roll that lip. Alright, I've got my two bits of wood set up as normal and I'll just start rolling that around and it should capture it. That will do. That was a bit harder to roll than normal. That's a bit thicker aluminium, I think. But uh, that's captured that end fine. 
and I'll let the adhesive dry and then I can put it back in the radio. The adhesive's dried on this capacitor and I've refitted it, I've soldered it in, I tested it and it works perfectly. The next thing I want to do is this volume control and as you can see someone's been at it. It's been opened up in the past and someone's crimped it back together. Uh, it's not working properly though. From this angle you can see the volume pot on the back and it also has the on off switch mounted on the front. A very unique setup. One of the things I picked up at the radio auction was two containers of potentiometers. So I started going through them and this was sitting on the top and it's the exact correct potentiometer. It's the same thing, switch on the front, potentiometer on the back. I measured the value, it's exactly right. It's exactly what the book says and if you watch the meter there, its action is smooth. So there you go. Well, who'd have thought I'd have one of those sitting in a box? So I will install this and this should fix the volume problem. I've taken all the wires off. I've made a little mud map of where all the wires go. I am concerned that I'm not going to be able to get this whole switch out of the chassis. But having said that, somebody's got into the volume pot at some point, so maybe it'll come out. I might come out the front. Oh, I was thinking I had to go back. That just comes out the front. <laughs> These are absolutely the same, they're identical. The only thing I noticed is the shaft is a bit longer on the new one than the old one. So I've put the volume control back in, I'm ready to test it. I had to change the shaft, this shaft was a bit shorter and it's a slightly different diameter. But it fitted okay, I just had a screw there, pulled it out and put the other one back in, or the original one back in. So it's on, there it is. Then we're starting to move the fire on. Is there aircraft in the air uh, moving around which, which map the fire as well as uh, aircraft that are bombing the fire to try and reduce the fire? So We've got some horrific bushfires around us or forest fires. Went across and map the fire. Like across the world and, and come and do it first up. But the volume control is working really well, but that's such a find, isn't it? I mean, no clue that I would have one exactly the right type. Oh, it's just amazing. Anyway, so that's working. Yeah. Like it. That's a bit wobble. What's happened to that? Oh, I know. <laughs> this fell on the desk before. That's off here. Oh, the screws come out. I'll have to fix that. But the radio's working well. Look. The, you wanted to throw the, the boards lit up. They want a few tips, but... That's brilliant. Now, apart from that volume control, of course, and I didn't look at this, but this valve now is solid. It's glued in the base. And, of course, the capacitor's back... Now the capacitor had a little bit of tape around the top and it might have been so you could grip it while you did the nut up on the bottom. I'm not sure what it was there for. I'm going to glue that back on so that it stays original looking. Normally at this point I would check the alignment. I'm not going to bother. This is working well enough. It doesn't need to be checked. It does need to have a bit of a clean up on the chassis. I can do that at my workshop. And I think once that's done I can put this back in the cabinet. Speaking of the cabinet, I'm going to do that next week. I'll wrap this video up for this week. I found this radio very interesting. It's a little bit different and uh, different valves, different valve sockets, some interesting problems that it had and they've all been repaired. So that's great. I do have to try and find a magic eye too. I forgot about that. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode and hope you can join me next week for my next radio adventure.